So we've got the forgery here. Uh, symmetrical map, symmetrical. Um, and it has, I'm not sure, the starting locations, I believe... North and South Poles. Are towards the North and the South Pole, I thought as much. Indeed. So typically you, you tend to see players spawn for the 6 mechs and the 4 mechs. I think the spawn point just about reaches the edge of the 4. We do see a few pings going off. There's an orange saying, okay, we need to go and play for that area. And as we can actually see as we look around this planet, it's a really interesting one. I think it's really well made and it's actually one that Andreas made, so that gives him, of course, an advantage in his team. But having said that, looking around, it's got a lot of uh, choke points between all of the rock formations. What do you think about those, Runcat? I will be interested to see um, which teams go for which of the outlying. Uh, I'm particular. I'm quite interested in the little island to the rear. I think that uh, that's quite a, st a, you know, a strong defensive location there, but it requires you to commit to air, which might leave you disadvantaged on the mainland. Indeed. In the meantime, though, our players have spawned in. So welcome everyone. We've got a two v two from the team duel tournament. We've got David Q and Chris J from Shoal Clan spawning on the North Pole in Orange. They've gone bots and air first simultaneously, getting up their eco and following up with a second bot and second vehicle factory. Meanwhile, on the South Pole. We have Northern Walks, Wormia, and Nafael going bots and vehicles. Following that up with air vehicles, vehicles, and more vehicles. I'm joined by Runkash. Very good evening to you all. Now, I'm interested to see here the build orders going, as you can see, on the black team. If you have a look at what they've got queued up. They have got factory after factory after factory. Meanwhile, on the North Pole, the orange team going for a largely eco build to start with. Now, it looks to me, and particularly given how far forward those factories are encroaching towards the territory of the orange player, the black team go for a very aggressive rush-type strategy here. Now, on a map of this size, that might be a little bit problematic, and there are plenty of obstacles which will prevent a very effective bot rush strategy. Nonetheless, we see some docks on the way out already on their way over to the orange base. We do indeed, and of course what we also see from the orange team are a few interceptors sort of scattered around, the hummingbirds there and a few fireflies as well just to get vision over most of the map and see all these choke points and a bumblebee coming in to follow that up. The docks are microed really impressively though, keeping those five alive. It's going to be interesting to see whether they can actually stay alive, that's going to be relying heavy micro, so would it be useful do you reckon to just let them die and save the micro an attention span for another location? Now see, if this were a 1v1 I'd say yes but because we're in a 2v2 actually it's often worthwhile having one player controlling the micro and the other one can sit at the back and base build and actually what we saw there uh, one player was obviously micro in those docks and meantime the orange team has come in with the raiding docks very effectively there almost killing off two engineers only managing to succeed with one but the defending player was able to see that off without any hesitation whatsoever Mm. And what we also see over to the west is an expansion by the orange team there. They did ping it early on, so we did know that they had uh, had this as their priority. They've got a singular bot fabricator there, and he's actually managed to pop up a Galata turret, which will defend against any bomber raids to try and take down that fabricator, meaning that uh, to, to actually raid that expansion, they will need docks or vehicles to do so. We actually see some possibly going that way. But it's good eco in the meantime for the orange team. And those locations there on the extremities are very defensible. Uh, they've got, a, they've not a huge amount of resources there. There's plenty more to fight over in the middle. But um, having those really easy defendable locations means you've got a nice, steady, solid eco stream, which helps you to build up your armies faster. And you certainly will start needing those very soon as the players head to head. Indeed. Now we do start to see the dichotomy of the early builds really. Uh showing itself there. We did see a few docks running headfirst into a bunch of ants, which of course in this sort of stage of the game is not what you want to do and as a result Orange Team, as we have seen, have adapted their cues to be much more vehicle savvy. Uh, following out with some infernos and also some uh, drifters there. So we're going for the amphibious tanks to go over lava. Now that's interesting because as I said, there's not a huge amount of amphibious terrain on this map. Um, so I would imagine that they're going to try and go via the rear of the planet, via that defendable platform location. We have a little skirmish now at the doors of the orange base. Enough ants there to see it off. I'm really pleased to be able to say without any hint of irony whatsoever. Those are indeed ants. <laughs> my co-caster Marshall here last month successfully regained the title for the T1 tank 
from Skathis of Uber, and it was an absolute fantastic match. If you haven't seen it already, it's on the YouTube's. Go and look it up. It's fantastic. It was. It was. It was a great game. But crucially for this particular game, we see it at a glance. Though, if you just zoom out and at a glance, we can see that there's a lot more black on the map than there is orange. This is not great for Orange because it means that they are sort of less expansive currently, although they do have a couple of locations, although Fabricators are getting picked off. But it does sh imply that Bra Black has the map control advantage here. Um, so it's well, going to be an uphill Black's struggle. Black is certainly more spread out here, and they're trying to take uh, certainly a terrain lead, but in terms of the economy, there isn't a huge deal of difference between the two teams at this point. Uh, Black are being a bit cheeky here, going, if you see my ping here, they've just sent a few ants up there to try and raid what should have been a fairly safe location, forcing Orange to send in their commander to defend, and they've actually managed, managed to take out one of those two metal extractor points. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we can see that the Orange team attempted to expand into this little field down here, but was taken out before they could complete the defensive turrets, and as such, that is left unclaimed. We now see some fabricators of the Black team moving into that location to try and fi finish the job. Indeed, we just saw a uh, on the screen there the uh, a little attack from Black trying to get into Orange, having to be defended. They did manage to take out a Mex, but it's all about this sort of constant harading and barraging your opponent. Yes, you don't necessarily want to overcommit too many forces because, of course, otherwise you're just throwing units away uselessly. But there is also the mind games of the whole. Okay, we're constantly under attack at our doorstep. We're constantly being on the defensive, the reactive, rather than the proactive. And in two v twos and going up into three v threes, four v fours, etc. Being the one who is proactive is a significant advantage in uh, in games of PA. Now you'll note here on the westernmost expansion there uh, from Orange, the black team actually managed to sweep in there, kill off fabricators, kill off factories, and are now harassing those metal extractors. They've taken out a couple, they're now being successfully bombed to get them out of there, but only after a significant amount of damage. That set them back significantly in their expansion efforts. You were talking earlier, Marshall, about wasting units. Interesting to note, the Orange team have repeatedly been sending ants up against Infernos, and rather than microing them and keeping them away from that short-range and highly damaging weapon mounted to the front, they've been streaming them straight into the Inferno's flamethrower and wasting ant after ant after ant. And no matter how large an army you build, if you continue to throw away units in that manner, you will end up with some real problems. And Orange is doing it once more, sending more ants as close to the Inferno's as they can get. It's, it's a really poor demonstration of micro, but more crucially at the moment is they really don't want to do that, especially considering Black are inside their base at the moment. They won't necessarily get too much damage done because they are kind of surrounded with uh, turrets and commanders to defend, but the point is those units got in there, and uh, the likelihood is now Orange are going to think, okay, well, they got that far in, we're going to have to do something to seal this gap, and as we can also see on the screen over here now, Orange has gone T2. Will this plug the gap? We shall see. Levelers do tend to be quite good against vehicles. We're now starting to see, though, the terrain advantage, the map control advantage of Black paying off in terms of economy. They have now pulled significantly ahead in the metal income department, which means that even though they don't have currently any T2, although they have, in fact, just completed a Tier 2 vehicle factory of their own to rival that already started by the Orange team, um, they have now got a real, real uh, problem as far as Orange are concerned. They are able to produce more units more quickly, and this constant pressure that we're seeing, again, more harassment <coughs> taking place right on Orange's doorstep, and they can just keep throwing more and more units after this without any problems whatsoever. Orange are on the back foot here, building walls in their own base, and lots and lots of defensive turrets to try and see off this constant harassment, which once more is taking out metal extractor after metal extractor from the Orange team. Yeah, it's really not good when you're losing those metal extractors that are effectively your proximal expansions. And you may refer uh, hear us refer to the proximal expansions there. You're sort of just your your close mechs that you aren't necessarily considering inside your base, but are considered, I suppose, natural expansions. If uh, if this was StarCraft, or you know, ones that you could expand too easily without necessarily being too worried about them getting killed off in raids. But the point is, again, Black are being incredibly aggressive, and Orange are just stuck in their base with limited eco. And, and yeah, I think we're starting to see the final nail in the coffin here. I just pinged you there. Now, the first thing that came out of that tier two factory for Black was an engineer, a fabricator, and they can afford to do that, of course whereas Orange at the moment are just currently streaming out military units from theirs. Uh, they are actually using that to bolster their eco even further so that the constant stream of units at Orange's front door is going to keep going and growing 
They're building more factories, making full use of that eco, and Orange have really got to pull off something a bit special here, I would expect. At this point in the game, seeing how much map control they've conceded, they are going to be looking at snipe territory. That's the only way I can see the Orange team pulling this back at this point. Mm, but don't forget they have got to get two commander snipes, although having said that, it's not too tricky because looking at both of Black's commanders, they're on the front lines of their respective lanes. The thing is though, if we look in the army tabs there, 20 factories to Black to 12, although the economies for both teams, their efficiencies are struggling somewhat. But I think, as you, as you say, the window for Orange is closing very, very fast indeed. And we do see a few bot factories going up from uh, the easternmost commander there, but nothing built from those factories. I think it might be a bit late for Boombots. Absolutely. And the, the black team now are actually building some walls of their own right outside Orange's base, hemming them in, preventing them from taking advantage of any of the metal extractors down in that direction. And there's just a basic, there's a no man's land which is slowly, slowly creeping towards the core of their base. They've got commanders on the front line defending, and it's only a matter of time before. This is a huge force here, just about to go into yeah. the heart of Orange's base. If that gets too close to that massive energy field sat right at the back of their base, Orange are going to have some real problems. There's really not a lot they can do. Their commanders are in the wrong place to Uber Cannon. Their forces are effectively non existent going back into the army tab there. 44 units total. I mean, it's it's really not looking good for them, and a significant number oh. are fabricators, and the power is just being chewed through. That's going to hurt a lot. That's going to completely cripple any chance they have. There are enough infernos in there. Infernos are so, so damaging if you let them get close enough. And they're currently just sidling by, hugging the energy plants, but it's a hug of death. They're exploding, and this is really, really game over for Orange here. They have got nothing they can use to pull off a snipe, and at this point, I would be expecting commanders to be deleted any moment. Mm, GG's to be called soon, we think. Uh, more pings going off. I think that was one of you. Oh, no, that was Black saying, Oh, look, there's a T2 factory there. We finished that off. We finished the game. And indeed, I think that is the only hope that uh, Orange have now, though they are starting to compile boom bots, but they're in the wrong place, and they're dealing with pelters now um, as well. I think the crux of the issue, I've just pinged you, and one of the main issues that Orange have is this. They have built so many fabricators, mm. um, they haven't had enough military units, they've not been expanding anywhere near as aggressively as Black was, and when they were, they were not defending those expansions anywhere near as well as they should have been. And ultimately, it, it, it comes down to poor micromanagement, which has carried on throughout the game, and has cost them dearly. Their commander is now being pelted, by a small swarm of units, he probably will survive this onslaught, but there's more to take their place. And at the moment, they're now being got from the rear as well. The other commander is caught between two forces, uber cannoning desperately, being hammered by those forces there. There is a leveler in there. He is taking a lot of damage. I'm not sure he's going to survive this. Yeah, it's not looking good for for these commanders here, as we see one about to pop there at the back of the base. Down he goes, and shortly... Number two is not far behind. Number two, yeah. He's just going to hold on for another minute or so, I think, before the next round of units comes up to demolish what's left of his health. 13% and dropping. Indeed, yeah. He's just going to try and make anything, <laughs> any headway he can. I'm coming for you, he says. He's Rambo coming in. He knows he is done for, but he wants to go down in style. And I think it's quite typical that the last unit to get a hit on that commander was an Inferno. And I think the Inferno's really won that game for the black team. Uh, <laughs> The orange team just kept charging armies into the middle of them. Silly, really. It was fairly narrow choke points. The black units were just hiding there, waiting for the orange units to come around. Every time they poke their head around the corner, boom, there's a flame in your face and you're dead. And that's really, I think, characterized the entire match. Um, really, I think orange team could have microed that a lot better. Yeah, I, I would have to agree there. But I think both teams probably could have done, could have done that. We did comment earlier on in the game how uh, how the black team there, Northern Walk folks, were were sending in their units almost in a whimsical fashion, trying to do whatever they could. But that is something to learn in two v twos. Anything can still count towards a victory or a defeat. Well, it's a very good game to watch. Though was, there was not a lot of uh, not a lot of waiting there. There were always units constantly fighting. It was just really, uh, for me, that was one of what I would call the typical World War One style uh, conflicts, where there was a there was a very firm front line established quite early on in the game, and it was just a case of shifting that front line. And I think what really clinched it when Black took control of both of the expansions to the extreme east and the extreme west. 
and were able to sort of horseshoe their way in. They were just pushing in the flanks. They pushed through the middle to follow up, and they just had control of more metal. They had a very secure foothold in the rear of their base where they were able to build up T2 uh, units and economy without any hindrance whatsoever, whereas Orange's tier 2 was very exposed from the go and the, the fabricators just couldn't get where they needed to be in time. And uh, unfortunately, I think they were soundly outplayed there by the Northern Walk folks there. But it was nice to see uh, Shul Clan, who I have to confess, I've not come across before. I like to think that I'm fairly observant within the PA sphere. I haven't come across them before. Um, but that was nice to see them come out and play, and I hope that they will return for the next tournament, having learned some lessons from this, and I think they can give the Northern Walk folks with a little bit more practice a run for their money. <laughs> 